So question 3a, we're going to graph 2x squared plus 8x plus 1. And if we, we're going to then compare it to question 2a and see if the vertex is in fact negative 2, negative 7. Okay? So like the best way to graph anything is just to make a table and plug in numbers. And the reason it's the best way is because you might have a nice linear equation of 3x plus 1. Or, and you might think I'll do the x, y intercept method. But all you have to do really is do a table and plug in values of x and you'll get the answer. Or you could have a quadratic equation like that. Or not only that, but you could have a cubed equation, x cubed minus 8. And in, in which case all you have to do is plug in some numbers for x and calculate y's and be able to graph it. Or you could have something like y equals square root of 3x minus 1. In which case all you have to do is plug in values for x calculate values for y and you can graph that. Or you could have something like y equals uh, 3 to the power of x plus 4. Okay, And you could also graph that using a table. So if you learn how to use a table and graph things, then you can graph uh, functions from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 and, and all sorts of classes and all sorts of chapters. right? So really, graphing with a table, if you learn how to do that, then you can do it for everything. So that's why it's such a cool skill. So what we're going to do is we're going to go x, and then we're going to go y. I'm going to actually get another piece of paper to make this neater. Sorry about that. OK, so I'm going to go x, plug in values for x, and then y is 2x squared plus 8x plus 1. Okay, what I like to do is where do I start? I don't usually like to start with zero up here. I like to start and put zero down here because I don't really know, you know, I, like I want to keep my numbers on the grid. And the grid is, you know, 10 by 10, right? So I want my numbers kind of close to the x axis for one thing. And, and I, so, and I don't know if I'll need more negatives or more positives to make to, to be able to get a good shape. To, to draw basically. So I'll plug zero in first and see how it goes. I'll probably do one after that and see where we are. And then I might do negative one or I might do two, three, four just to see what numbers I get. But I always start with zero anyway because it's a nice easy one to do. So two times zero squared plus eight times zero plus one. And you just calculate that. All you have to do is plug in zero. That's it. Just whatever the value of x is, you just plug it in here. See that? And that gives us 2 times 0, right? Plus 0 plus 1, which is just, you know, 0 plus 0 plus 1, which is just 1, right? And now, and I like to put the 1 here because then it's like an ordered pair, x comma y. See that? 0, 1. See that? Right? Anyway, so then I'll plug in 1, and again, wherever I see x, I'm just going to plug the 1 in for x. And I'm going to use parentheses. 2 times parentheses squared plus 8 times parentheses plus 1, right? So I'll plug 1 in here. See that? 1 squared is what? You've got to use your order of operations, PEMDAS. PEMDAS says do exponents first. So we're going to calculate 1 squared, right? Which is 1. And 8 times 1 is 8. Okay, and that gives us 2 plus 8 plus 1, which is 11, right? Right? And now I've kind of gone off the grid, you see, because my grid is 10 by 10. So, I, I, so like, I've gone up to 11, so I've kind of gone off my grid. So that's why I'm going to choose. See, I made these numbers up, 0 and 1. I made them up. It's imagination. I'm going to use my imagination. I'm going to go back to negative 1, right? You know, and your thing to think about is look, we already know the vertex is this, you know, and this is going to be kind of like in this shape. So, you know, negative two, negative seven is going to be about here, right? So we already know that's the vertex. So we, we should probably definitely plug in negative two and, and some numbers either side of it, like negative three and negative one, or negative four and uh, zero. I mean, that's what this is the kind of range we're looking at with this graph, isn't it? Right. So we should definitely plug in negative 1 anyway and see where we're at then. 2 times x squared plus 8x plus 1. So plugging in negative 1, what does that give us? What's negative 1 all squared? Well, it's negative 1 times itself, right? Which is positive 1. 
what's 8 times negative 1? So negative 8, right, plus 1. So that gives us 2 minus 8 plus 1, which is negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5, right? So we got negative 1, negative 5. Let's plug in negative 2 and see what we get. 2 times x squared plus 8 times x plus 1. In fact, so negative 2 all squared would be positive 4, right? And then minus 8 times negative 2, negative 16 plus 1. What's that? That's 8 minus 16 plus 1. So negative 8 plus 1, which is negative 7, right? Now if you look back to our question 2a, you'll see the vertex was negative 2, negative 7. So it looks like we found the vertex this way, right? Which is good. And um, so, we, like, like I said, the vertex is around here, so you won't be plugging in numbers either side of it. Plus, you're thinking about the grid, too. Look, my grid is about 10 by 10, so I need kind of nice numbers there. So let's try negative 3. 2 times negative 3 squared plus 8 times negative 3 plus 1. Negative 3 all squared, what's that? Positive 9. 8 times negative 3. Negative 24 plus 1, what's that? 18 minus 24 plus 1, right, what's that? Negative 6 plus 1, what's that? So that should be negative 5, right? And you might notice the symmetry here too, because look how we have negative 5 here, and then we have negative 5 here, right? And this is the vertex, negative 2, negative 7. So you probably guess that the next one's going to be negative 4. What do you think be the next number here? If you calculate it, it should be 1, right? Because 1 is down here. See how you got 0, 1? So you have the symmetry. And then if you plugged in negative 5, you should get what? should actually get 11. Why? Because look, 11 is down here. See, 1, 11. So it should be symmetric, right? So when we go to graph it, right, we've got our x-axis and our y-axis. The vertex, negative, so we'll just go ahead and grab a negative 2, negative 7, we know. Negative 2, negative 7, that's about here, right? Then we've got negative 3, negative 5. Negative 1, negative 5, 0, 1, 1, 11, which is all the way up here. And we reckon we all should also should have negative 4, 1, right? And we also should have negative 5, 11, right? So, I mean, but we could calculate these, but, but we've calculated quite a bit, you know, and, and it looks like that's what it's going to be. So the graph would be looking like this right and then and then like my point is this if you were to plug in negative a half you know you if you were to plug in all the decimals and fractions you would get all these little points here okay you get lots of little points if you were to plug in all the decimals and fractions in between and and that's what, how we know this is a curve I mean if we wanted we could plug in x is a half and x is negative a half and x is a negative um, you know uh, 1.5 and x is positive 1.5 and we get all get all these decimal decimals in fact you get as many decimals as you like and you get all these points I would show this thing to be a perfect curve like this okay so that's where it comes from we're not making it up right but it would just take too long to do all those decimals so but that's something to bear in mind right so that's a graph and you put arrows at the end to show that it's going up and remember it's going up and out in that direction and up and out in that direction it's going on forever the vertex here of course is your negative 2 negative 7 right